I see far too many people butcher their dumbbell press technique and it's limiting how much muscle they grow. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here with you today, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching, breaking down the best technique on the dumbbell press to build muscle. What is good technique for building muscle and how much does it even matter? Well, fortunately for you, I'm an author on a paper on exactly that topic. And so I should be able to give you some good technique pointers to increase how much muscle you build with dumbbell pressing. Let me break down what that paper found. Good exercise technique for muscle growth likely has three or four components that you need to be aware of. First, you want to be using an effective tempo. Based on a meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues from a few years ago, repetitions lasting much longer than about eight seconds likely aren't ideal for hypertrophy. However, once you get in the right ballpark for tempo or how long each rep takes, you likely won't see any big differences in how much muscle you build. Based on some more recent evidence, there may be a benefit to be had in terms of muscle growth by having an eccentric phase of at least one or two seconds and a slightly faster or more explosive concentric phase or lifting phase. Ultimately, don't just dive bomb your dumbbell press, actually lower the weight under control. No one's giving you any medals or awards for dumbbell pressing more weight. Instead, use the tempo that maximizes your muscle building. On the other end of the spectrum, just like you don't want to dive bomb your reps, as I mentioned earlier, you also don't want your reps to take much longer than about eight seconds. Not many people are doing this anyways because a lot of people like benching as much as they can, and if they control the reps more, the weight goes down. But as long as you're between about two seconds per rep and eight seconds per rep, you're likely in the right ballpark. So a good tempo is absolutely important for maximizing hypertrophy, but you actually have a pretty wide range that you can play around within. The second hallmark of good technique for muscle building we identified is external momentum generated by other joints or really in short, body English. Ultimately, the technique that we use should maximize the chances of the target muscle group or muscle groups being the limiting factor in the movement. If you're using a ton of body English, it becomes less likely that the target muscle groups are a limiting factor, and you're also just generating additional fatigue for potentially not any additional benefit. With that being said, no studies to date have actually compared a more cheaty technique to a more strict technique and seeing whether one leads to more hypertrophy than the other. And so, while we have a fairly compelling rationale at this point that you don't want to be cheating on your lifts, we still need direct evidence to confirm that this is the case. In the dumbbell press exercise specifically, the chest can be the limiting factor, or the triceps, or the front delts, or they can all be taken pretty close to failure. The third hallmark of good technique for muscle building is range of motion. And depending on the range of motion you use, you could be getting an additional five to 10% hypertrophy. The main thing with range of motion seems to be that we want to emphasize getting a stretch in the target movement. While we don't have evidence directly in the pecs or in the dumbbell press exercise, we do have evidence in a variety of muscle groups across a variety of exercises, lending credence to the idea that generally, as far as range of motion goes, we do likely want to be getting a full stretch in whatever technique we use. Additionally, the bottom position would ideally be pretty challenging. Fortunately, in most dumbbell pressing exercises, that bottom position is a loaded stretch. It's not an easy position to press out of. On the flip side, it is fairly common for people to miss out on that bottom stretch position because it is challenging and skipping it makes it easier to lift more weight. But the research suggests that's a mistake. At the very least, you'll want to use a full range of motion on dumbbell pressing exercises, making sure you get a full stretch. If you wanted to take the emphasis on the stretch even further, you could perform lengthened partials, essentially going from a fully stretched position to about halfway up. Personally, I aim for an elbow angle of about 90 degrees at the top of each rep. Additionally, the dumbbell press is one of those exercises where you can safely go to failure with lengthened partials and then just drop the weight. So you could do a full range of motion set and then just do partials at the end of the set when you can no longer get a full range of motion. And in fact, an as of yet unpublished study that I'm involved in actually found greater hypertrophy in the calves when doing exactly this technique, finding about 50% more hypertrophy when going past failure and just doing lengthened partials at the end compared to stopping the set when you couldn't get another full rep going all the way up on your tippy toes. And so the idea of doing lengthened partials after going to full range of motion failure may have some utility. In order to further emphasize that stretch position through range of motion, a little tip I can give you is to angle the dumbbells upwards as you reach down. This will increase how deep you can go and how much of a stretch you can get on your chest before the dumbbells just straight up touch your chest. Finally, consider briefly pausing in that bottom stretched position. This just increases how much time you spend down there, with that position likely being very important for hypertrophy. The final component of optimal exercise technique 
is preference and pain management. Let me break it down. If you're doing all of the above, you have a good tempo, you're accentuating the stretch via range of motion, and you're minimizing body English, and a certain technique just feels more enjoyable, by all means, you can use that technique. For example, if instead of a four second eccentric or lowering phase, you prefer a two second eccentric lowering phase, by all means, you're probably gonna get the same hypertrophy, go for it. The same goes for elbow positioning being slightly more flared out or slightly more tucked in. And the same goes for pain. If you experience pain using a certain technique but not another, consider changing to that second technique. For instance, even if angling your elbows out a little bit more may give you a little bit more of a stretch on your chest, if it makes you hurt, maybe don't do it. Now that I've broken down what the four components of optimal technique are, let me break down how to do the dumbbell bench press to maximize muscle growth. First, grab a pair of dumbbells. I like to deadlift them onto the front of my thighs. Once they're on top of your knees, aggressively kick your knees back towards your shoulders in quick succession of one another. Once both dumbbells are on your chest, press the weight up, anchoring your feet and pressing them into the ground slightly. From here, control the weight down for about two seconds. Angle the dumbbells inward slightly to increase the range of motion. Once you get to the bottom, pause briefly when you reach your chest. From here, press all the way up explosively out of the stretched position. No need to touch the dumbbells together at the top as this motion is virtually unresisted. If you want to do lengthened partials, come up about halfway until your elbows reach an angle of about 90 degrees. Personally, I like using lengthened partials on the dumbbell press exercise as a means to emphasize the stretch even more and potentially see more hypertrophy as there is now some evidence comparing lengthened partials to a full range of motion suggesting lengthened partials may lead to a little bit more hypertrophy. Once you're done with the set, reverse the motion you started the setup with. I find it easiest to end the set when the dumbbells are at the top of the ramp. Alternatively, if you're comfortable with this technique and there's no one around you and it's safe to do so, you could end the set when the dumbbells are at the bottom, just dropping them onto the ground slowly. So that is the optimal technique for dumbbell pressing and maximizing chest, shoulder, and tricep development. Let's go through a technique checklist that I described earlier and see whether or not we hit every component perfectly. As far as tempo goes, we're having at least a one to two second eccentric, a brief pause in the stretch position to emphasize all muscle lengths and an explosive concentric, landing us with an effective two to eight second duration for each repetition. Second, as far as the range of motion goes, we're making sure we get that loaded stretch within the movement, going all the way down, even angling the dumbbells up a little bit to get a deeper stretch. At the very least, we're getting a full range of motion in, and potentially we can increase the stretch even more by just doing lengthened partials coming about halfway up. So the range of motion box is ticked off as well. And finally, as far as limiting external momentum generated, we're not excessively using leg drive or getting our hips off the bench, turning into more of a decline press. Not that there's anything wrong with a decline press as an exercise, but that is not the exercise you set out to do in the first place. That is the video. I broke down how to do the dumbbell press exercise to maximize hypertrophy of the chest, triceps, and front delts. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below what other exercises you struggle with and would like to see me cover from a queuing and technique perspective. If you aren't subscribed already, please do consider subscribing. Around 50% of you aren't at the time of watching this and I would really appreciate your support. Likewise, please hit the bell as well. Sounding an awful lot like needle drop right now. Please hit the bell as well, as many of you also aren't getting notifications whenever I do post a video. Whatever you do, your support is much appreciated. If you'd like me to coach you, consider checking out the link above and I could become your coach. In the meantime, have a fantastic, phenomenal, sickening day. Mila Wolf, the big, the big scientist. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Mila Wolf, the big, the big scientist. It's a sickening shower. Peace out, bye.